Honorable Mention. Chairpersons, uh, uh, respected senior friends and colleagues. So here I am again. Let's talk about uh, risk stratification, especially rega regarding to sudden cardiac death. So already uh, the speaker before me did such a wonderful job of explaining so much of about the basics, about all those things and all. So these are my disclosures. So we are already now having a little bit of the knowledge about the basics. What is about sudden cardiac death? What are the population which is predisposed to? So I will try to skip uh, most of these slides, in fact. So as Madam was also pointing it out, being in our country like India, we all have to be, first of all, aware about the basic minimum things, like the CPR. Of course, the other uh, cause factors, the etiologies for the sudden cardiac death as well. So uh, the previous speaker already spoke about the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the role of ICDs, and there are some other conditions as well, for example, like the dilated cardiomyopathy. So what happens is due to the stretch in the heart, of course, the pump function will start to reduce. And those patients will start having those shortness of breath, palpitations, and further, rather than just echo, you will be even able to see some of those signs on the ECG as well. So accordingly, you will be having to treat such kind of patients. So the, there are several other conditions as well which may cause sudden cardiac death, like the ARVDs, Marfan syndromes, and several congenital heart disease. I'm just trying to skip these slides because it has already been spoken. So there are several channelopathies as well which can cause all these problems. So it's not just about looking at those clinical signs. So you should be also doing a good history taking as well of those patients. So what about the family history? How about the symptoms? Like for example, as the person is doing some exercise, then it tends to aggravate or, you know, so like this. So these are kind of some of the things which is definitely going to help us all to go into the right direction. The family history, ask for the screening, the concept of screening as well. So it is already there in the Western world, for example, in US or some of those European countries as well. I think this needs to percolate down further in our India as well. And then uh, not just screening those uh, high risk people, in fact, even over their relatives as well, you all have to go through that. And there's already a high risk uh, of highly predisposed people, which is called as that, like those young competitive athletes as well. So this is the European approach. How do they do? For example, if there's someone who's planning to take a competitive athlete or plan to participate as a competitive athlete, so they have to do a family history, personal history, physical examination, uh, ECG will be done. And if it is negative, only then that person is going to be allowed to participate for the competition. Otherwise, if there's something is positive, they have to go undergo further more testing in the form of echo, stress test, and uh, henceforth, in fact. So there's a big role even in the availability of the AEDs as well. So a availability of AEDs not just in the hospitals, but also in the public places as well. I still remember uh, my guru uh, in India, Professor George Cherian. He gave us an example. So they all were the ones who were trying to get uh, or increase the awareness for the availability of AEDs. And they, had, uh, they held it to be available in Delhi airport in one of the corners and all. And it seems, so there was a foreign delegate whom they all had been over there to receive them. And one of the persons had uh, developed certain cardiac arrest. So what happens is not just think about, uh, we all should not be just thinking about our own benefit, but even for the society at large, sometimes or the other, if those system is going to be there in the place, it is definitely going to help uh, them, us or anyone in fact. So now coming to the risk stratification test, so it has already been covered in fact, but this is my topic, so let, I'll try to spend some time. So uh, we are very much aware left ventricular ejection fraction is one of the really important factors whenever we are trying to risk stratify the patients for a certain cardiac death. However, if you are trying to take care only of single, uh, like only this factor alone, it is not such a good factor. It's indeed a poor predictor in fact. So there may be someone who may be having just 30% of ejection fraction, but it doesn't mean that that, per that person is going to get an arrhythmia. So you have to combine them with the other factors as well. And once you combine them with the other factors, I'll be speaking more. So then the predictive value is much more better. For example, 
what with uh, what other factors can you combine? For example, with EP study. So, for example, with the EP study as well, there are studies which has showed. I was speaking to Dr. Prabhu as well day before yesterday about this. Is if only with three extra uh, programmed extra stimulation studies, if you are trying to do, and with four extra, uh, if you are trying to uh, induce the tachycardia, this alone can make a difference of almost 30%. 30% of uh, the risk factors for the sudden cardiac death. So similarly, when we were doing the case, uh, just few days back as well, Monotosh was there. Monotosh is here? Oh, he's already taking rest. <laughs> okay, uh, so even those machines, they tend to say that less than 200 milliseconds, you should not go. And you know what is the reason? I, I'm going to show you the reason. So what happens is less than 200 milliseconds, even in the normal heart, like which is, who is not even predisposed for those risk factors, you may be able to induce unnecessary arrhythmias as well. Okay, so uh, and same. So, so th this was the fact which I was uh, trying to tell. A lot of times we develop a fear by uh, like, okay, someone has already has had a myocardial infarction, so you may be able to induce a lot of other arrhythmias, and it's not safe. No, this is no longer the concept, and this is proven.